Hi, I'm Mr. Tyler. You might recognize me from my work in the zone. Because I'm smart, I know your time is important. But don't you worry, precious young ones. I'm here to present a speed sermon about the importance of your time. <clears throat> oh yeah, Mr. Isaiah's gonna help. But like I said, kids, this is gonna be a speed sermon. So you better pay attention because this one is gonna be fast. Now we usually talk about time in numbers. 15 minutes, 60 seconds, seven days. Numbers tell us how many days till Christmas. How many donuts are in a dozen? How much mustache cash you have? We're always keeping track of numbers that are important to us. And we don't just do this because we love math. We do this for a reason. We're excited for Christmas. We have to know how many donuts are left. We gotta know what we can buy in the mustache store. But all this talk about counting makes me think. I wonder if there are things that we should be counting that we don't. You may or may not know this, but the writers of the Bible counted all sorts of things. They tell us creation took six days, that God wrote the Ten Commandments, and that Jesus rose from the grave on the third day. In the book of Psalms, we find something that we should all count. You might remember that the book of Psalms is actually a collection of songs that help us learn about God. Today, I want to look at Psalm 90. Psalm 90 is actually the oldest psalm in the Bible. And if I was writing it, I probably would have called it Psalm 1 because it's the oldest. The truth God wants us to know is short and sweet, but it's very powerful. Psalm 90 verse 12 says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. You may have noticed that fly buzzing around Mr. Isaiah's beautiful scalp. That there is what we in the bug lovers community call a mayfly. On average, the mayfly lives 24 hours. Some female adults only live five minutes. Rest in peace. The mayfly has been nicknamed the one day insect because that's all it's got, one day. What if that were you? Could you imagine? You get to the end of your first day on planet Earth and wham, total annihilation. I bet you'd be wishing you hadn't wasted so much time watching YouTube, am I right? <laughs> Mr. Isaiah, do you like the ocean? Oh, sorry. <clears throat> well, the ocean is home to the animal with the absolute longest lifespan. I'm talking about your bowhead whale, people. Woo! There she blows! The oldest bowhead whale we know about lived for over 200 years. That's equal to 77,015 mayflies. Crazy, right? Hey, Mr. Isaiah, can you speak whale? <laughs> Stop. Stop! And then there's us, human beings, people like you and me. Our lifespan falls somewhere between a mayfly and a bowhead whale. So why does God want us to number our days in the first place? And how do we number our days? Maybe we're not supposed to ask God to tell us how many days we have. Maybe we need to ask God to help us recognize that there is a number to our days. It might be easy for you boys and girls to live like you have all the time in the world. I mean, you're young, you just got started, you're not adults yet like me and Mr. Isaiah. The danger is that we can start to live as if we have so many days left that they don't matter. The truth is, our time is limited. That's why our bottom line is use it or lose it. Can we try saying that together? Use, use it, it or lose, lose it. it. It's simple, but it couldn't be more important. Want examples? Mm -hmm. We'll give you examples. Sports. Unless you're training for the Olympics, your sports season only lasts a certain number of days. Are you gonna be lazy at practice? Are you gonna be a slacker? Are you gonna let those precious minutes, hours, days, weeks, months slip through your fingers? No, sir. You're gonna use it or lose it. What about school? Will you waste those years? Or will you work hard and learn everything you possibly can? And let's not forget about family. On average, you spend about 3,000 hours with your family every year. 
Some of you have siblings. They might drive you crazy. Or some of you might not always understand your parents' rules. But guess what? At some point in your life, you won't get to spend this much time with your family. You'll move out. You'll go to college. You'll get to start a family of your own one day. So what's it look like for you to number your days at home now? To respect your parents and your siblings. To help out around the house. To love your family well. These are the questions we want you to answer this month. Because the truth is, your time is limited. And if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Thank you.